Hello, this is Holly Sanders, and thank you for joining this video presentation on which we're going to look at membrane transports. This is for the ALHS 1011 Anatomy and Physiology course, and it does coincide with Marib's Essentials of Anatomy and Physiology Chapter 3. Basically, you have to figure out what membrane transport is. So if you recall what you've just studied on the cell, it has three main components, the nucleus, the cytoplasm, and the plasma membrane. And as we looked at, the plasma membrane is a double phospholipid layer. And to uh, help you recall this information, you can remember here's one shown here with the heads, and here's the other layer shown here with the heads, and their tails are coming to each other in the middle. And if you remember, these heads are waterphilic, meaning they like water, so they're touching water on the outside and the inside of the cell, whereas the tails, which are made of lipids, are insoluble in water and, water and hydrophobic so that substances cannot just move through the plasma membrane. So basically, what we're going to look at in this section is how the cell does regulate what goes in and out of the cell. This is what we refer to as membrane transport. Now there are two types of membrane transport, passive and active, and the only difference between these two is that active transport must use ATP. Passive transport does not require any energy, where active transport does require ATP. So the important thing for you to know right now is that whether it requires energy or not, the goal is to move substances in and out of the cell as necessary. And just remember that the regulation of this is part of what keeps us in homeostatic balance. So the first thing we're going to look at are the passive transport processes, and there are four of them. We'll start with the first one, which is called diffusion, or you'll see in the text, simple diffusion. Basically, this is when the movement goes from a high to a low concentration. So if you look at the example that's here on the page, you can see what looks like a tablet here, and there's a high concentration that is eventually going to move throughout the entire substance. You can see it goes from high concentration to low concentration. Or let's look at an example that includes our double phospholipid layers. So this is an example of how items diffuse through the plasma membrane. So if there is a larger amount of the substance on the outside of the cell than on the inside of the cell, then it will simply diffuse through. So diffusion is high to low concentration. So if there is an equal amount on the outside or the inside, then there won't be any movement across the cell membrane. Or if there is a larger amount on the inside, then it will diffuse out of the cell to the outside. For this to happen, the solutes, or what's moving through the plasma membrane, have to be lipid soluble and small enough to pass through. The next type of passive transport that we're going to look at is called osmosis. And basically, that is the simple diffusion of water. So now recall the definition of diffusion, which is moving from a high to low concentration. So osmosis is high to low of H2O. That's the way I remember it, by using that little rhyme. So if there is more water molecules outside of the cell than inside the cell, water is going to move through the plasma membrane. And because these molecules are larger, they'll actually use this protein carrier, which is located along the plasma membrane, to slide on through. Again, if there's more water inside the cell than outside, osmosis will occur and water will move back out of the cell. If there's equal water on the outside and the inside, then there will not be any movement because diffusion and osmosis always move from a high concentration to a low concentration. The third type of passive transport is something called facilitated diffusion. And if you think about the word facilitated, it simply means there is a helper. So this is diffusion, which always means high to low concentration, but in this case, there has to be a helper. And as you can see on this picture, these proteins are acting as the helper. Basically, these proteins are made to transport things that are not soluble or insoluble in lipids, or they're too large just to slide through by simple diffusion. So these facilitators are what's going to allow these items to move through the cell membrane. Each one of them has a specific shape inside this protein that's only going to fit one specific item. As you can see, here's a pentagon shape on this 
item and there's a pentagon shape on, on this protein carrier. So as it comes through, see how it shuts on this end and opens on this end? This is how the bouncer or protein carrier works to make sure only the proper items are getting through the cell membrane and other things aren't rushing in as it opens. So it has to fit this perfect keyhole. So think of these proteins as facilitators or helpers for diffusion. So again, there's more on the outside, so it's going to go onto the inside. And this will happen until there's an even amount on the inside and the outside of the cell. The last passive transport process is called filtration. And this is basically when water or solutes are forced through the plasma membrane by some sort of pressure. So go ahead and just mark in your mind that filtration equals pressure. A pressure gradient must exist for something to cross the plasma membrane. In review, the four types of passive transport are simple diffusion, osmosis, facilitated diffusion, and filtration. And none of these cell transport processes require ATP. They all happen without the use of energy. On the flip side, we have two active transport processes, and these do use ATP. They have to use ATP or energy to help move things across the, the plasma membrane. And here are the two. It's solute pumping and vascular transports. We'll look at solute pumping first. Basically, amino acids, sugars, some ions are needed to be transported by protein carriers and we call these solute pumps. Basically, for the carriers to work, it's going against a concentration gradient. So if you imagine paddling upstream, you're going to have to put a lot of energy into it. And that's basically what these protein carriers are doing. They're kind of like the ship that you're paddling upstream to get across the current, which would be part of the plasma membrane. So it does utilize a lot of ATP. One of the most common solute pumps is called the sodium potassium pump, and that's necessary to regulate muscle contraction, and we'll look at that a little closer. But just remember, solute pumping is moving against a gradient and uses a protein character to move things out of the cell. The next type of active transport is called vascular transport, and you might remember looking at a vesicle which is created by the Golgi apparatus. Here is a picture of the vesicle. Now you may notice immediately that the package that the Golgi apparatus created looks identical to the plasma membrane. Look, double phospholipid bilayer, double phospholipid bilayer. You see the heads and the tails and the head and the tail. So as the Golgi packages this, it's sent to the plasma membrane. As this diagram shows, once it gets there, it joins the plasma membrane because it is one of the same and as it joins completely, it opens to the outside. Now if you move from right to left, you can see it moving from the cytoplasm to the plasma membrane and releasing its products. This is what we would call exocytosis. If you break this down, exo means exit, cyto means cell, so the process of exiting the cell. Exocytosis is when it's being released to the outside. Now if you move from right to left, you can imagine this is starting to buckle and as it gets larger and it finally breaks off to come into the cell. This process would be called endocytosis. Endo meaning into, cyto meaning cell. So coming inside the cell. So in review, we just studied the six main types of membrane transport. And remember, this is how cells bring things in to themselves or release things out. And there are two types of transport, first being passive. The four types of passive are diffusion. It moves from a high to low concentration. Osmosis, high to low H2O. Here's a picture of osmosis, high to low H2O. Facilitated diffusion, where a protein helper allows certain products in through its specific keyhole, and then filtration, which requires pressure. There are two active transport processes, solute pumping and vascular transport. Solute pumping is when substances are moved against a gradient, so if you imagine paddling upstream 
and they're carried on a protein carrier, so that would be kind of like the raft or canoe that's being paddled. And then in vascular transport, there is a package that either joins to release to the outside of its exocytosis or removes itself from the plasma membrane to be brought inside the cell if it's endocytosis. And there's the picture. In the next lesson, we're going to study tissues. Have a great day.